indexing, archiving, retraction policy. Um, they're just in it for the money. And I showed the graph with those profit margins so you can see why, why they're in it for the money. There's a lot of money to be made. So how do you keep your manuscript out of the clutches or the shark's teeth um, of a predatory publisher? And uh, go ahead, next slide. Um, just quickly before I share some tools, for those that aren't familiar with the term, what is a predatory publisher? Uh, next slide, Ethan. It's basically, these are publishers that exist to exploit your work for no other motive other than the money that they're gonna rake in. They are not interested in quality, in, in accuracy, in reproducibility, in sustainability. There's no, none of that is in place. So if you publish with a predatory publisher, there's no, um, a, there's no guarantee that your work will, will persist because they have no archiving policy. Um, they will likely just take your manuscript and just upload it to their website for a hefty chunk of, of change, but you're not actually contributing to that known legitimate quality uh, corpus of knowledge. So it's important, and I know that Moran has been very focused on avoiding predatory publishers. So one of the things that I wanna make you aware of is that there is a new tool to help. Ethan, if you wanna to go to the next slide. Um, the library, the university has recently added a subscription to Cabell's. Um, this is available from the library's um, homepage, our website, our databases A to Z list. And Cabell's is not a, uh, one and done, answer every question you have kind of place. Some of you may be familiar with Beale's list, um, which was a list that a librarian at the University of Colorado, Jeffrey Beale, started many, many years ago, where he would list suspected predatory journals or publishers, and this was like a, a one-man show. Very difficult to maintain because um, predatory publishers are kind of like a game of whack-a-mole. Every time one gets, you know, whacked down, a lot of the same players just pop up somewhere else with a slightly different title and a slightly different. So they're constantly proliferating. Um, and Jeffrey Beale shut down his list a number of years ago after um, repeated threats from some predatory publishers. Um, and so that effort has now been taken over by actually a company, and this is a product that has, I mean, this is a licensed product um, because the amount of effort that goes into maintaining this is, is massive. Um, as of today, I think Cabell's is up to almost 15,000 um, predatory publications listed. However, it is, like I said, it is not a universal, it, things will be missed. But what I would recommend people do is that if you have an invitation to submit a manuscript somewhere or you're just looking at titles and you're like, huh, I've never heard of this one. I wonder if this is legit. You can look it up in Cabell's. If Cabell's says it's predatory, that's, I mean, stop sign. It's don't go any further. If you look it up in Cabell's and it's not there, it doesn't mean, oh, good, it's fine. It may still mean that you need to do some further investigation and the library is happy to help you with that effort. Um, I think in the last month, I've probably investigated about a dozen titles for publishers or for, um, for predatoriness on behalf of researchers. And out of the dozen, I think eight of them were in Cabell's. Another four were not, but on digging into them, all four of them were, were not legitimate. And there is a way for for example, for me to notify Cabell's, there's another, there's another one you need to take a look at. Um, and all four of those titles, I'm sure, will ultimately end up in this list. But this is a great place to start. If you're not sure if a title is predatory, look it up in Cabell's. If it's there, don't go any further. Cabell's will also tell you why they have flagged it as predatory. It will list the quote unquote violations um, in their publishing practices. So it's a tool you can use to help you avoid getting sucked into publishing with a predatory publisher. Another great tool you can use is the library is always happy to help research um, publishers or journals on, on your behalf. Last um, thing that I wanna to touch on, and this is not publishing specific, is I just wanna bring your attention to six titles that all either have new additions um, or one that is just a new title. So all six of these are Next new. slide please, Ethan. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank you. Yes. 
Um, so all six of these titles um, have are, are new additions that are, are available to the community. I'm not sure if the slides will be made available to participants. These these images all link directly to the books. Um, most of them are on the clinical key platform. Uh, the one thing that I did want to point out here is that some of you may note that the new ocular pathology title is, is available. There is a new edition for that. However, the case uh, reviews that accompanies this book um, does not have a new edition yet. So you still have access to the old edition of oc ocular pathology case reviews, but the new edition of case reviews is not out yet. I think it comes out in 2021. So some new titles that are available um, for some of our, our, our new residents. All of these titles um, support unlimited use. Um, so they're great for, for study. And I think the last slide is just how can you get help? Um, phone, chat, email. Um, you can submit a question. The Eccles Library hours um, are from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., although right now with COVID, um, we are actually closed other than to students and residents um, who can get access with their badge. Um, but we are available still from 9 to 7 online. We're still responding to reference questions. And the Bloomberg Library is open 24 hours. Um, so thanks, thanks so much, Christy. <laughs> Um, I want to uh, make sure everybody knows that we do have funding for books. Uh, the Bloomberg Library Committee goes over all the requests for books. And uh, so let us know if there's a particular book that you think we need to have in our library, either virtually, uh, electronically, or in the physical uh, Bloomberg Library as well. Next, uh, Griffin Jardine who is an assistant professor here at the University of Utah Moran Eye Center, and he's in the Division of Pediatric Ophthalmology. He is our editor-in-chief of the Moran Corps, and I'm going to turn it over to him to talk about all the new things that are going on in the Corps. Griffin. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, and thanks, Christy, for that uh, really informative lecture. Uh, I feel like it could have been retitled uh, FOMO for your TMI uh, presentation. So very relevant as usual. Next slide, Ethan. So the uh, the Moran Corps, I, I am uh, really excited about how this platform is integrating more and more, I think, with our own resident education as well as gaining this popularity and usage around the world. Uh, next slide. You know, I think one of the aspects that has been most enjoyable for me about being a part of a university is the opportunities for collaboration. And I can't thank Christy and Nancy enough and the Echoes Health Sciences Library for the, for the uh, amazing support and work they've done. It wouldn't be possible without that collaboration. And I, as, as always, our goal is to provide high quality peer reviewed materials um, that are freely available, open sourced uh, on both YouTube and searchable via Google. Um, which allows for this, again, high quality information to be accessible around the world. And we, we just saw how expensive um, access to journals can be. And this is, I think, really just a, a gem available on the internet for ophthalmologists uh, everywhere. So next slide. The um, last year's updates, I just want to review some of these. Because again, I think this is really relevant to as we go forward with the um, new resident lectures, um, we have taken all of the recorded lectures and put them in one place under each subspecialty category as fundamental lectures. Um, you can see uh, Nick Mamos's um, path lectures there as an example. We have a couple of sections that were reworked substantially over the past year, uh, namely neuro and optics, and I want to thank uh, Megan C. and David Myers for their efforts in, in that. Uh, next slide. The three sections I want to highlight today uh, or updates uh, uh, are in ophthalmic pathology and then those two at the bottom, uh, Moran op ophthalmology learning experience of the mold work that has been done and then allied ophthalmic training, uh, a section done in collaboration with the outreach department. Next slide. So starting with our first update, the ophthalmic pathology section has been 
created practically overnight, it feels like, with uh, new content, these beautiful past slides. Uh, this is again, a, you know, the whole purpose of CORE is to uh, capture and showcase the wonderful work happen happening at the Moran. And we have this big database of images and slides from Dr. Mammoth's lab. And we now have these wonderful slides labeled with explanatory text and these NICS tips sections. I think it's really clever and catchy. And um, I just want to acknowledge the work that's been done on this section, especially from our current PATH fellows who have just kind of bulldozed through this work in a really impressive Herculean effort. Uh, Catherine Culp and Philip Hugh, and then the past PATH fellows, uh, as well as Lloyd Williams, who, who did a big outline for this. And then, of course, Dr. Manlis and his lab for their uh, contribution to the Moran and then to this um, new educational resource. Uh, next slide. So just to give you an example, um, the this is the conjunctivus section. Um, again, I apologize, it's a little out of focus, but you can see there's a just under this one section, there's you know 26 subcategories. Next slide. And then under each subcategory, you have uh, the slide and then the labeled slide next to it, and then uh, just some wonderful text. I mean, this is essentially a path textbook. Uh, online. It's beautiful. And the next slide, you can see when you select the images, they come up in, you know, a really high resolution uh, and labeled format to be uh, just, again, a wonderful resource. Next slide. The second update is this mole section we've added, and this is increasingly uh, becoming a value as this is now starting this Friday. We had a, a fabulous uh, kind of flipped classroom model lecture from um, uh, done, done last week. Um, and then we're getting, we, I think, uh, we have our oculoplastics going this week. So the, uh, the so some instructional videos, uh, I just want to say thank you to Rachel Simpson, who's headed this committee. And then these instructional videos can be great to faculty who are still unclear or looking for more guidance on how to, um, flip the classrooms, how to prepare the pre-work, um, a special thanks to Catherine Hu and then Tara Han, Rachel Patel, Srav uh, as well, who have worked on these videos and then put together some resources for our faculty in this transitional process. Um, it was, sorry, Dr. Vitali did the last uh, flip classroom lecture just on Friday that was fabulous. Uh, uh, they've just escaped for just a second. Next slide. Uh, Last update is the allied ophthalmic training. Uh, this was actually kind of the brainchild of um, Sophia Feng, our recent graduate in the um, International Fellowship. And this is going to be uh, another resource, but targeting maybe a slightly different audience, our, our ophthalmic nurses and ophthalmic technicians, both domestically and abroad, um, who play a huge role, especially internationally, in, in uh, getting the um, in taking care of patients and um, addressing the curable forms of blindness. And so this is just targeted towards that audience. Um, and, I, and I know our outreach team spends a lot of time educating um, these ophthalmic nurses and allied ophthalmic um, uh, uh, staff and support staff. So again, just another way that we're trying to reach and support uh, the international efforts. Uh, next slide. So I, I, of course, want to uh, have a little bit of a podium for the uh, this year's most viewed YouTube videos. Uh, in first place, we have Tom Oberg's um, orbital exam with almost 2 million hits. Uh, second place, Judith Warner on the neuro ophthalmology exam with just, you know, almost approaching 1 million uh, views. And again, you, I mean, this may not seem like a ton to, to compare to some other YouTube videos, but you think about the ophthalmology community and how much smaller it is. And this is a really impressive, uh, uh, impressive showing for the, the content we're putting out there. Uh, in third place, I want to uh, talk about David Meyer's video. He, he did a wonderful video on um, doing a, a refraction, a subjective refraction. Next slide. He, he gets an honorable mention because his performance and uh, um, just good looks, I think were so uh, impressive to some overseas companies that they took the footage, uh, relabeled him as Federico Uzeda and used it to sell eyeglasses. Um, so uh, on an unfortunate note, we obviously want this protected uh, and this was cut and removed, but uh, 
David Meyer did express his sadness that he will no longer be a superstar in Brazil uh, as, 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 Fred, as Puerto Rico Uzeda. Uh, next slide. I think that's the end of my lecture. I just want to say a special thank you to Kathleen Degree, who uh, leads this committee uh, and just is such a talented force for good and for leadership. And I'm really wonderful to be a part of the committee with her. And then thank everybody at the Moran. I, I really have enjoyed this opportunity to see all of the wonderful work that you do as it's captured in this uh, core format. And uh, thank everybody for the, uh, the contributions they continue to make. And I'll turn it back over to you, Kathleen. Yeah, thanks, Griffin. That's a really nice uh, overview. And if you haven't been to Nick Mamelis's site, uh, you got to look at it. It's uh, it's amazing. It's going to be um, the same as a any um, ophthalmic uh, pathology textbook. Um, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Nancy Lombardo. Uh, Nancy has been a partner with us at the uh, at the Bloomberg Library. Um, and has been my partner in crime for doing the neuro-ophthalmology virtual library. Um, uh, she is the head of digital publishing at Eccles Library, and she manages the uh, neuro-ophthalmology virtual library or novel, and she also manages, of course, CORE, and uh, she won a, uh, an award from Nanos in 2018, the Merit Award, and then she also uh, received an award from the Medical Library Association in 2017 for all this amazing work that she's been able to do. Um, uh, she's a great, uh, great partner uh, uh, to us in the library committee. And so Nancy, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. We can go to the next slide. So I was just going to review some of our statistics. Um, the website statistics shown here, um, you can see that we've had constant growth since the Moran Corps became live. Already this year, we've had more sessions than we did all last year. So that growth is continuing. Um, so next slide are, are the videos that we store, uh, host in the Moran Corps are, are actually hosted on YouTube. So our YouTube statistics, which Griffin cited some for our top three videos, are very impressive. And um, you can see that already in quarter two, we've had almost 800,000 views, more than 3 million minutes of watch time with an average duration this year in the four minute range, which on YouTube is a very long time. And we have almost 12,000 subscribers. So people are watching and as new things come on, it's kind of fun to watch because people will watch them almost instantly when we load them into YouTube. Next slide. Uh, we have users from 199 countries and I just wanted to say if anybody knows somebody in Iceland or Greenland, could you give them a call and tell them to check the Moran Corps because then we'll have 200. <laughs> Next slide. So anybody, any of you can submit to the Moran Corps. And I, we want to remind you that anything that's accepted into the Moran Corps is considered a peer reviewed publication in an online educational platform. So it's something that you can cite on your CV. We're already, we have been capturing the grand rounds and resident lecture presentations, which are stored in YouTube but we accept videos, PowerPoint presentations, image reports, case reports. So this is something you can get a publication from work that you are already doing. If you do a conference presentation and it goes well, submit that to the core and get an, a publication out of it. Uh, other lectures or meeting presentations, case reports. All the medical students who are doing rotations at the Moran will contribute to the basic ophthalmology review. Next slide. Uh, we do have an editorial board for the Moran Corps. So there is a faculty member assigned to each section and they oversee the content in that section. So that definitely gives authority to the site. Next slide. So the, if you do think about submitting, we have a metadata template that's available that just 
is a form that you fill out that provides us with all the descriptive information and it's linked in the guidelines for authors page which you can find on the footer of every page in the Moran core. You can share these items via box, which is great. You can also email a submission to morancoresubmissions at lists.utah.edu. Or if your files are large, you can use Send It, which is the university's application for sending large files. Next slide. Uh, the guidelines for authors are very straightforward, and as I mentioned, they're linked right on the footer of every single page. Uh, so if you submit something, you can, first of all, you can have it reviewed and approved by your attending faculty member if that works for you. If, if that doesn't work, we will have somebody from our editorial board review the item. So you must remove all PHI or obtain permissions from the patient. And we do have university authorized patient permission forms available. So if you need that, um, I think Elaine has those. So do not, uh, and we can also link that on the site, but uh, do not use copyrighted material um, within your PowerPoint or your video. You should not use any copyrighted material. Uh, when you submit, if the editorial board reviews it, it will either be approved or it might be approved and ask for some revisions or it can be rejected. Uh, we will notify you either way and the author will be notified so that you can cite this on your CV. Next slide. So the metadata template is very straightforward, very simple. It won't take you more than a few minutes to fill it out just gives us all of the descriptive information, your name, your credentials, where it fits into the menu structure. So the core category is important because uh, we need to know what, what topic area the submission fits into. Next slide. So as far as copyrights, if you do publish something in the core, you retain the copyrights to the material. So you can reuse it or revise it any way that you wish. And this is something that you should always request of your publisher. Anytime you submit a scholarly article and you have media enclosed of images or video, anything like that attached, you should always request that you retain the rights to that media so that you can reuse it. If you don't do that, the publisher takes ownership of that material. And this has been a big problem with people who have published beautiful textbooks filled with images and media, and they did not retain their rights so they can no longer reuse or they have to pay to reuse those. So always ask for permission to retain the rights to your media, no matter where you're publishing. So again, don't use copyrighted material. Remember that anything you find out there on the internet or in a published journal is copyrighted. So you can only use things that are licensed for reuse. And even then you should cite the source. If you need to use a table from a, a journal article, you should just summarize it. Do not copy and paste it because that is copyrighted material. Do not use copyrighted music. We have had a Grand Rounds presentation tagged by YouTube because it had Star Wars music in it and we had to remove the music in order to continue to play because these music publishers do not want us sharing their music. Uh, so don't refer to any copyrighted material in your presentations without acknowledge, appropriate acknowledgement, permission, and citations. Next slide. So this information is all in the guidelines for authors page on the Moran Core, but there are many, many really great sites that offer beautiful reusable images that are medically oriented. And so this list is in the guidelines for authors page and you can search through Creative Commons, Visible Human, Wikimedia, et cetera, novel, uh, there are many sites that offer images for you. You should still make note of where you get the image and cite it in your presentation. But, but these are our sources where you can find images that are available for reuse and are legally reusable. So go to this list. It's on the Moran Core. 
even if you're not publishing in the core, no matter where you're publishing, this is a nice source of images that you can use. And I think that's summer. That's it. Next slide. I think that's all we have. That's it. Great. Um, so uh, thank you, Nancy, for going over um, that. I can't um, highlight enough that when you publish an article with images, and of course in ophthalmology we're always publishing images, please ask your publisher to say that I retain the copyright to those images because they um, then you can reuse use them for um, other purposes like a textbook or whatever. Uh, it's just a trick that um, I've learned and I've even published whole books and asked that all the images uh, be under uh, my name for the copyright so that uh, we, I can reuse them for other things. Um, uh, so Dr. Patel has said to Nancy, we have some excellent topics and videos published on other flat platforms to which we hold copyright. Can we use the, this material with a link? Yes, yes you can. Yes you can or you could take those images and uh, reuse them in a new sort of document or presentation and that's that is perfectly acceptable, yes. Please do. And in fact, uh, Dr. Patel, if you are more interested in increasing that orbit section, we'd be happy to meet with you and talk about ways to uh, beef that up a little bit. That would be great. Um, any other questions? Um, I know um, Ethan can unmute you um, if you have a question or a comment. Okay, well, uh, get you out of here a little bit early. Um, I want to thank Christy Jarvis, um, our partner at the Eccles Health Sciences Library, also Nancy Lombardo, for all of the work that she's done on CORE. And also, I want to thank uh, Griffin for taking this on as the editor in chief for the CORE. I think this is really an amazing educational resource. And, um, and I really appreciate all the hard work that all the faculty have been doing to make it uh, great. Uh, keep the submissions coming, especially your uh, videos, surgical videos are really, really um, very popular. Uh, when you say, Nancy, that that's one of our most popular things? Yes, people love those. And um, just a reminder to all of the section editors, uh, you saw what Dr. Mamelis did. He completely revised his section. It's completely different. That's okay. If you want to do that with your section, we'd love to get together and discuss any options. So, okay. Thanks, before, everyone. Before we go, it looked like Dr. Hatch. Were you raising your hand? I'm trying. You should be. I'm muting. Yeah, I there need we go. the chat. I'm, I don't know where the chat is. I play around with my screen and I don't, don't see it. It's on the bottom. Uh, it's on yeah. the very bottom of your screen. It says chat. There's, yeah. there's, you can click that. But you're, you're, you're live, Dr. Hatch. If you have any questions or comments, you're, you're live. Well, this is fantastic. I, I just love our core. I think that it's just super that the Moran Eye Center, where, where things are high, high quality, are going all over the world. Yep. Thanks. Thanks for that comment. Thanks, everybody. And let us know if you have any questions, uh, requests, um, and uh, if, you, if you want anything else updated, we're, we're here to help. The Bloomberg Library Committee is, is here to make things work for you. So thanks, everybody. Have a great day.